In the previous video, we introduced the idea of the Caesar cipher and talked about how one could encrypt messages using this very fundamental uh, symmetric key crypto system. But we also mentioned the, the, the great vulnerability of the Caesar cipher. Uh, the cipher is only as effective as the size of your alphabet. And 26 letters is way too small that it's vulnerable to a brute force attack. Even if you could increase the number of characters in your alphabet to be hundreds of characters, that's still going to be insufficient for a computer to brute force all the possibilities. We need, we need our modulus essentially to be hundreds of digits long. I'm not talking about hundreds of characters. The number of characters needs hundreds of digits to truly be secure from computer brute force attacks. And so therefore we need a lot more possibilities than just what the alphabet provides us. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna increase the Caesar cipher uh, to what we'll commonly refer to as the affine cipher, which the Caesar cipher, uh, it follows the basic idea that X, we'll think of it as a number we're trying to encrypt, we'll replace X with X plus B, some shift to it. The affine cipher is gonna improve the number of possibilities by taking X and we're gonna replace it with AX plus B. So we're gonna multiply X by some value A and then we're gonna add a shift to it as well. So we're going to basically stretch the value and then add to it. This is called an affine cipher because we're performing an affine transformation like you might see in linear algebra. Now, if A is chosen to be co-prime to your modulus N, then you can divide by A. We know that A, A inverse would exist. And so then we can solve this equation. We can solve it uh, for Y. So if Y equals AX plus B, then we subtract B from both sides. We get AX equals Y minus B. And we divide both sides by A. So we get A equals A inverse Y minus A inverse B, something like so. And therefore, we can decrypt this process. And so that adds a lot more possibilities. So in it, beyond just your modulus n, you're gonna, your number of possibilities is going to be phi of n times n. Where phi of n here, this is uh, Euler's totient function. So you get phi of n times n. So it's going to be much more secure than the cipher, uh, than the Caesar cipher method without that. And so if you take something like take, you're going to, maybe you're going to times by a and you're going to add three. And so what would happen to the message algebra? Let's take a look at that in magma right here. If you've been following along with this in this series here for magma, the magma code, you can find from the link from GitHub uh, in the message description here. Uh, in order to do this encryption, you have the Caesar encrypt and the Caesar decrypt commands in your compiler. You also need the supplementary procedures of alphabetize and digitize. So you can turn letters into numbers and vice versa. Uh, so we can see some messages we had from before. Um, what we're going to do, showing you what's going on here, just erasing this code. So we want to encrypt the message algebra, I believe is what we wanted. Um, I'm doing lowercase. The previous was uppercase. Uh, alphabetize and uh, digitize, they don't care. They're not case sensitive here. So if we encrypt using A was 5 and B was 3, if we run that, we're going to get the message DGHXIKD. Great. And so if we want to decrypt it, then we're going to run Caesar decrypt. Decrypt. Uh, we pl plug in E, the message we have there, and we have to use the same key, 5 and 3. And so when we run that, it's going to give back the original message algebra, which admittedly it switched everything to uppercase, but that's something we definitely can live with. Um, if you, you can pick a different key if you want to. So it's going to be much more secure than the Caesar cipher. Now, I should mention that the affine cipher, in terms of uh, professional grade cryptography, of course, it's going to be pretty, dip, uh, it's going to be still pretty elementary there. That even with 26 letters of the alphabet right, you're going to get 26 times phi of 26, which phi of 26, uh, that's just the same thing uh, as phi of 13. Uh, 26 is 2 times 13 there. And so that's going to give you 26 times 12. And so, you know, if you look at that, that means it's going to give you a couple hundred possibilities. So it definitely would be very difficult for a human to do this by hand, but a computer is going to be able to exhaust these possibilities uh, very quickly. So the idea is um, perhaps there's an encoding process that we can use larger, uh, larger modulus in this consideration. And the answer is, yeah, our encoding process for this lecture is very, very naive. And there can be ways of doing it so that uh, we get a much, much larger modulus from the encoding process itself. So for a large modulus, this is a great improvement over the Caesar cipher because the 
the because the number of possible keys can be too large to be, to be brute forced, right? Um, unfortunately, this is still considered a weak crypto system for the following reason: since different characters in the language in, in a language appear with different frequencies. So, for example, if you're in the English language. Uh, just using the language I'm speaking right now, I hope that's English, uh, the letter E, for example, it shows up in a random word with a probability of 12.702%. So about 13% of all letters in the English al alphabet are going to be the letter E. On the other hand, if you look at the letter X, this comprises about 0.15% of every letter in the English language. Now, admittedly, if you're using X's as spaces, then that's gonna change the frequency as well, but we can make these considerations, or you can consider these things. And so using the frequency um, of the letters in a, in a language, and a little bit of guess and check, a computer could very easily decrypt a anything from a substitute cipher, where by substitute cipher, what I mean is uh, every letter is being replaced with a different letter. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as a monoalphabetic uh, substitution cipher. So if you replace letter with letter, like so X is replaced with Y or something like that, uh, the frequency of letters is too valuable of a tool for, for eavesdroppers to attack that type of crypto system. So one thing you could do is you could improve the function digitize that we've introduced earlier, and you could try to avoid frequencies by using um, numbers maybe to represent pairs of letters or triples of letters or things. So instead of coding one letter at a time, a monoalphabetic method, you could try doing something like a pair of letters is then encoded. You could do a substitution like that. That gives you a lot more possibilities and that makes the modulus much, much, much bigger. Now, I mean, admittedly, these are not without uh, vulnerabilities to frequency attacks as well. You know, because for example, the pair, the pair TH is much more frequent in the English language versus the pair QX. I don't know if that ever appears, right? And so again, there's some frequency issues that can come into play here. Fortunately, there do exist much more sophisticated digitization processes to protect the ciphers discussed above, uh, but that's gonna take us beyond the scope of this lecture series. So what I'm trying to say is that one could implement an affine, uh, an affine cipher in practice if the encoding process is sophisticated enough to guarantee a large modulus. That if the modulus is big, 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 then the, the idea, the brute force technique is not gonna work. Um, and so then Alice and Bob can have some security in that Eve cannot trans or cannot decrypt their message because she doesn't have the key. And without the key, just guessing is never gonna work. But again, there's a lot more to this that we're not gonna talk about because I just want to give us to give the viewer here an elementary uh, an elementary introduction to these symmetric key cryptography type topics, particularly how they are relevant to algebraic problems we've talked about before, such as the Caesar cipher and the affine cipher right here.